Hi, welcome to another session of circuits and networks. In today's class one, under coupled circuits, also known as magnetic circuits, we are going to see basics which are involved with two coils and how to obtain self inductance, mutual inductance, and coefficient of coupling for a given two circuits which are placed parallel to each other. So consider two coils or circuits placed adjacent to each other as shown in figure 1 where you have input voltage V1 supplying current I1 in coil N1 turns which is going to give a self inductance value L1 and if coil 2 is placed adjacent to coil 1 and current is flowing in coil 1 then what is the value of inductance which is going to develop in coil 2 that is called as mutual inductance so that we are going to see by considering these two coils so what we have to do we have to imagine a current i1 which is flowing through coil 1 of n1 turns a flux fine is produced in that coil that is coil 1 the flux produced by coil 1 links with the coil 1 itself. Now, if the current I1 flowing through the coil 1, it changes by itself, then the flux linking the coil also changes. Hence, an electromotive force that is called as EMF is induced in coil 1 and that EMF it is denoted as self-induced EMF. The direction of this induced EMF is given by Faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction or is also known as Lenz law. Now this is the self-induced EMF produced in the coil 1. In order to obtain the value of L1, we know that the flux produced in the coil 1 itself, it is proportional to the current I1 which is flowing through it. Hence, phi is equal to Ki1, we are removing this arbitrary uh, value that is the direct proportional value with a constant k where k is defined as the ratio of flux to current i1 which is flowing in coil 1 itself. Therefore, the rate of change of flux with respect to time is equal to k times the rate of change of current with respect to time. So, treating these two equations as 1 and 2 and the statement what we have framed in equation 2 Therefore, the self-induced EMF in coil 1 is obtained as E1, which we are denoting as induced voltage. So, E1 is equal to minus N1 d5 by dt. Minus indicates uh, the resultant opposes the cause, that is the Faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction or we call as Lenz law. With that, we got the negative sign. Then, treating this equation as 3 and substituting the value of phi. Uh, phi is nothing but equivalent to ki1 so therefore it becomes minus n1 k di1 by dd substituting the value of k we have here phi by i1 therefore this n1 phi i1 we are reading as l1 so equation 4 is framed from equation 3 thereby the self inductance of coil 1 is obtained to be l1 is equal to n1 phi by i1. This we are treating as equation phi. What if suppose we have the source voltage as V2 placed in the coil 2 and current I2 is flowing into the coil 2 and we need to estimate the self-inductance of coil 2 then the formula will be equal to that is the self-inductance formula will be equal to L2 N2 phi by I2. I hope this is clear. Fine. The self inductance is the property of the coil that opposes any change in the current flowing through it. That is what we have deduced from equation 5. Now consider coil 1 and coil 2 in order to determine the mutual inductance. So if the flux produced by coil 1 links with the coil 2, as shown in figure 1, that is already if we have framed this figure 1 and we have reframed the figure as figure 2. 
So an EMF is induced in the coil 2 due to the change in the flux produced in the coil 1. This we can see you have the self-induced EMF which is already generated. But when you are going to talk about the coil 2 due to the change in flux produced by the coil 1. So that phenomena is known as mutually induced EMF. So here self-induced EMF is linking coil N1 on left hand side. The same inductance it is also present on the right side of this coil 1 and coil 2 is brought in vicinity of coil 1. Therefore, the coil 2 is said to get exposed to coil 1 where it is having current I1 driving the entire circuit or coil 1. So, the mutual flux is obtained because of the main flux which is due to the current I1 flowing in the circuit. Now, phi 2 that is the flux linkage in coil 2 will be obtained as equal to Ki1. We have removed this proportionality constant such that phi 2 by I1 will be regarded as K and the rate of change of flux in coil 2 it should be equal to K times of rate of change of current I1 in coil 1. Then the self-induced EMF in coil 2 is obtained while determining the voltage developed in the coil 2 which is equal to minus N2 D phi 2 by DT where phi 2 is nothing but K multiplied with I1. So it becomes minus N2 K DI1 by DT. Hence, we are going to get E2 which will be equal to minus N2 phi 2 by I1 or N2 phi 2 by I1 replaced by M which is called as mutual inductance whose value is given by equation 10. The same thing you can do in vice versa. Energize the coil 2 with V2 and let us suppose I2 is flowing into the coil 2. Then the mutual inductance which can be obtained in coil 1, it will be uh, M is equal to N1 phi 1 by I2. So I hope you have understood how the mutual inductance plays the role when currents are energized in one coil and other coil is bought in vicinity of the current carrying coil either in left hand side or in right hand side. So that is how mutual inductance play a role. Right. Now determine the coefficient of coupling which is the main point where we need to concentrate so that the overall the ratios of the magnetic flux produced due to mutual inductance to the ratio of the self inductance it should be equivalent to sorry it should be less than or equivalent to 1. So when you are going to solve numericals on self inductance and mutual inductance whether they are placed in series or parallel then we will easily estimate what is the value of k. For time being let us determine the coefficient of coupling and arbitrary sense by assuming the ratio of the fluxes. So, coefficient of coupling is defined as the ratio of magnetic flux produced by current in one point that links with the other point. So, consider figure 4 where we see two coils having N1 and N2 turns respectively and where a current I1 is flowing in first point and is changing and EMF is induced in second point. Then the mutual inductance as we have seen from the previous formulas is given by M is equal to N2 phi 2 by I1. This is in the regard when current is flowing in coil 1. Let us have the ratios of fluxes as Ka which is equal to phi 2 by phi 1 assuming that current I1 is flowing in coil 1. Then the ratio of fluxes which is given by Ka is equal to phi 2 by phi 1 and replacing the value for M such as phi 2 is equal to Ka phi 1 will be obtaining the value as m is equal to n2 ka phi 1 by i1. This we are treating as equation 13. Also, if we assume that the secondary coil is energized and making the current i2 to flow into the secondary coil and coil 1 is in the vicinity of coil 2 when current is flowing in coil 2, then m is obtained to be 
n1 kb phi2 by i2 here we are assuming the ratio of fluxes as phi1 by phi2 and regarding the ratio as kb by assuming that the secondary coil is energized and secondary current is flowing in the secondary coil and primary coil is brought in vicinity of the secondary coil with that the mutual inductance can be obtained by equation 16 so we have equation 13 equation 16 just multiply equation 13 with equation 16 we are going to get m square is equal to ka kb n1 phi1 by i1 n2 phi2 by i2 uh, just observe in the equation 13 and 16 we have all these parameters and m square can be made equivalent to k square l1 l2 then you know that the self inductance values of n1 phi1 by i1 it is self induced emf of coil 1 n2 phi2 by i2 is the self induced emf with the coil 2 ka kb we have assumed as the flux ratios when primary and the secondary currents are made as the inputs respectively so i am replacing ka kb by k that is the ka is equal to kb is equal to k and hence this becomes k square overall m will be equivalent to k times root l1 l2 where k equal to k a k b therefore k will be equivalent to the the ratio of m to under root of l1 l2 so this ratio is known as coefficient of coupling so it's a simple derivation theoretically uh, when we are going to solve the problems when we have inductors arranged in series or in parallel whether the mutual flux is aiding the self inductances or mutual flux is opposing the self inductances based upon that we can easily determine the coefficient of coupling of the given coupled circuits so i hope you like this particular video this we are treating as class 1 under coupled circuits we are also parallel dealing with the uh, machines for uh, csc it and other branches which are having the core branches as their um, uh, interdisciplinary syllabus. So, we will be following class 1, class 2 under magnetic circuits uh, in a week as well as we are going to deal parallelly with the machines also. So, I have a hope uh, you will like this thing and please circulate uh, about this information among your friends and subscribe to my channel and please 